and our beautiful community. As we draw some lessons about what 2023 was like and try to take out from that what we're going to see and what we'd like to see in 2024, let's look at the sad reality that the tyrant in the Kremlin has had a good year. And I've written for us a very brief, just six-point thread about this, but on Twitter, whatever that platform is called now. But I'm not going to sort of reheat the obvious things that Ukraine's counteroffensive wasn't successful or that Putin was um, a bit lucky to uh, come out as he did from the Prigozhin um, mutiny. We're going to say a few things that are, I'm not going to imply unobvious, but they're um, less often said. So, of course, Putin's regime is going to collapse and his project will collapse because he doesn't have anything to offer. You have to offer violence plus something constructive if you're going to be a horrible meanie who sustains himself in imperial expansion. But there is a question, what will be the cost that we'll all endure of the collapse of this project when it eventually collapses? So the thing will collapse and Putin will not in the long term be a beneficiary of the changes he has unleashed. But he has had a good year. In 2023, Putin successfully redefined his global war as a local war for the world's consumption. And when I say he redefined it, um, this is a hyperbolic statement. This is the redefinition that occurred for various various reasons, one that he wanted, but it occurred for a complex set of reasons. His aims, Putin's aims, remain global, propelled by regime security and a mystical vision of overturning whatever was left of the international order. Putin knows the best way to convince, the best way to succeed in his global war is to convince the world for a little while that it is only a local conflict. So there is this really bizarre oscillation in the which the Russian regime in which the Russian regime talks to the world, which is we want to change the global order. All of that is unacceptable to us, and it's existential that it changes as far as um, you know our interests go. But at the same time, just clear off, because it's just a little bit of a you know ex-Soviet space conflict going on, and it's not really any of your business. This is the sort of thing that happens very often. I mean, the West has done different things, and we're doing a thing, and yeah, people don't like it, but we're doing a thing. So we're doing a thing in Eastern Europe versus um, we want to... Uh, break the global order. There's a difference here. Global ambition, uh, please look at us and give way. Local ambition, please look away, there's nothing much going on. This, this mix of these two incompatible messages, just like um, to begin with, there was a bit of a mix of messages for local consumption in Russia, we are taking on the world, we're taking on the West, just a quick little operation in Ukraine, just some small problems, a few ticks there and here, and we're done. So these tensions have been uh, in a balance that favors, he's been able to hang these tensions in a balance that, that um, favors him in 2023. This is working, I say. In 2023, perceptions have shifted, redesignating Putin's war from a uniquely dangerous project to one conflict among others. Obviously, this is exaggera an exaggeration for many reasons, one being that it's not obviously true that at the beginning the West designated this conflict as something um, special, as a, as a project that poses a special kind of threat. Uh, but nevertheless, the point of this hyperbole is to attune us to the fact that there's genuinely um, a change in temperature. And sometimes when that happens, it 
if it happens gradually enough, it can feel imperceptible. But that's why it's worth emphasizing that um, the narrative in the West accumulatively is increasingly about this conflict as one conflict among others. One conflict among others, yeah. In 2023, Putin also succeeded in redefining the war for Russians, from a short, successful enterprise to a long-distance standoff with the West with no end in sight. And he has got away with that so far without destabilizing his regime. And that's an extraordinary stroke of luck, uh, ach achievement, outcome for Putin. And he has roughly done it. That's not to say there isn't going to be a lot of turbulence for him after his election, but election in quote marks, election, election like procedure. But nevertheless, he's got there. And Ukraine hasn't, right? This gives him an advantage over Ukraine's government, which has not done this yet. So Ukraine is, as a society, yet to face this challenge. Well, if you're not going to win this outright in a relatively short period of time, what is it? What are we doing? And who is leading us through this? Putin has arrived at a stable rebalancing. And that's a remarkable, uh, you know, achievement slash stroke of luck on his part. In 2023, Putin's original gambit came to look less self-destructive than it did in 2022. It didn't become less self-destructive. It came to look in the eyes of some of the world, including some of the West, as less self-destructive. Putin's brutal attack on Ukraine was designed to spur on a world that was coming, but wasn't yet there, a world without rules. A world without rules in which democratic decline at home prevents Western powers from sustaining and reforming the international order. Weakness, lack of strategy and withdrawal are the new trend and we always end up coming back to democracy because and this is one of the more distinctive points i wanted to emphasize over recent months that it's not moral failure on our part but democratic incapacity that is preventing us from approaching global challenges with strategy and there's a self-perpetuating mechanism here that in fact we can't put together the strategy because our democracies are too much in crisis or in semi-crisis but the longer we lack a strategy the more we dilute the, the more we further dilute trust in institutions at home so this is a very difficult thorny self-perpetuating dynamic that we're in and we'll continue to draw lessons and look ahead to 2024 in the next in the next day or two lots of love